All right, home stretch. This one's gonna be short, I promise. So critical thinking, interpreting frequency distributions. In general, we wish to know how data is distributed. One common type of distribution is a normal distribution or a bell-shaped curve. So you probably heard of that somewhere before, but uh, so anytime you hear normal, think bell-shaped or vice versa. So we can identify some common features of a normal distribution. So the first one, the frequencies start low, increase to one or two high frequencies, and then decrease to a low frequency. So it kind of goes up and then down. Two, the distribution is approximately symmetric. Frequencies preceding the maximum frequency should be roughly a mirror image of those that follow the maximum frequency. So I have an example on table uh, 2.6, page 46 in your textbook. So let's jump to that real quick. So you can see from here that we have uh, a frequency distribution, which shows a normal distribution. So it starts off at 2, starts low, increases up to a maximum of 30, and then it drops back down again. So it does have that go up and come back down look to it, and it also is symmetrical. So it's uh, this one's a perfect mirror image of itself on the front end versus the, the back end. So that's what you're looking for, those two key elements. Now there's going to be some flexibility as far as when do you have a strict normal distribution versus a loose normal distribution. So sometimes they'll have one of those conditions met, but the other one's not quite there. So that's kind of what they're looking at if it's loose. But if it's strict, it's it's very, very close. There might be a little tiny discrepancy in there, but overall it's pretty darn close to having both of those criteria met. So that's what we're looking for. Okay, so now let's take a look at this last example, which says to construct a frequency distribution of the following data, begin with a lower class limit of 0.00, .00 and use a class width of 0.5. Using a very strict interpretation of the requirements for a normal distribution, do the magnitudes appear to be normally distributed? All right, well, so this one's a little different than that previous example where we had to create the starting point and everything else. This one's a little different because they give you some of that information. This one wants you to start with a lower class limit of 0.0, .0 for the first class. So we want 0 0.00 to something. And then use a class with a 0.5. So they, they give us that as well. Now remember, we don't go horizontally. You have to go vertically. So we want 0 0.50 and then keep adding that 0.5 to it. So if we do that all the way down, oops, then it's going to give us all of those lower class limits. So now we should be able to get the upper. Now because we had two decimal points, what's the closest you can get to 0 0.50 with two decimal points on the low side? and that would have to be 0.49. So 0.49 should be the upper class limit for the first class. And then you can cheat again. Use that 0.5 to get the rest. So 0.99, so 1.49, 1.99, 2.49, and then 2.99. So again, not terrible uh, but now comes the tedious part so we're going to go through and put all those in the right spots so guess what we're going to jump right to it so you can see if you get all of your tallies done this is what we should end up with so we got a five here we got 15 looks like we got 19 7 2 and 2 so there's our frequencies. Now, the one thing that I didn't show you before is when you're creating a frequency distribution from data like this, 
doesn't hurt to double check to make sure you got all of them. So we didn't do that in the previous one, but one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there should be 50 numbers in this table. So let's just double check that we got them all. So let's clear that. So we have five plus 15 plus 19 plus seven plus two plus two equals 50. So now that doesn't mean that we got them right, but it does mean that we got them all. So you don't want to be missing one or something like that. So that's why it doesn't hurt to cross them out as you go, which again, I didn't do on the previous ones, but we should be okay. So it does add up to 50. Now let's answer the question. Using a very strict interpretation of the requirements for a normal distribution, do the magnitudes appear to be normally distributed? Well, strictly, meaning both of those requirements, you know, pretty darn closely followed, only one of them is. It starts low, it goes up, and it comes back down. You can kind of look, turn your head sideways and see. It goes up and it comes back down. But the second one's not met. Is it a mirror image on from one side to the other? No, it's, it's not. So we would need to have, you know, these two in the middle be closer to the same height, and then the other two kind of taper off evenly. And we don't quite have that. So... Is the answer yes or no? We should say no. Um, the distribution is not symmetrical. So, so even though it goes up and comes down, it's not symmetrical. So it's not a strict normal distribution. Now, before I close, let's go back to this one, what would, your, what would you say about this one? Is this normal? Well, I would say it's more normal than the previous one because there is a little bit of an issue, you know, with these two in the middle. And, of course, the start and the end are not quite the same, but it's, a, it's definitely more normal than the previous uh, example. So this one, I would say, is, I would argue it's probably... Not strictly, but it's pretty close to strictly uh, a strict interpretation of the normal distribution. So, but that's kind of the idea of what they're looking for. Loosely, you know, does it go up and come back down? Sure. Is it symmetrical? Eh, that's where you got to be a little bit more rigid. So, all right. So that wraps up this video and we'll see you in the next one, 2.2. All right, stay tuned.